Good evening, everyone. Erev Tov, everyone. Who's with us? Stephen with us. Hilton with us. Dr. Liz with us. Who else with us? Brian and Glenda with us. Who else? I see more people joining us. I'm not sure who's with us. Dr. Liz, how are you? Hello, Rav. How are you? Erev Tov, Tu Bishvat Sameach. Tu Bishvat Sameach, Rav. Wow. Kol Am Yisrael. Wow, Tu Bishvat Sameach. Rav, some amazing news. I'm just going to show you. I don't know if you can see it. But if I show you this, this is today's Jerusalem Post. Uh, I don't know how clear it is. But on the front page, okay, on the front page, we have the news. And I'm embarrassed to say that a bank that I've been, I was a, a client for 45 years, uh, one of the major South African banks, there's three actually. They say the major South African banks provide a platform to fund Hamas. And these include Nedbank, Standard Bank, and APSA. And they oh. have been funneling money from the Al Quds International Foundation, which fund Hamas. It is absolutely outrageous. It is despicable in every sense of the word that these three banks, which have got an international reputation, have been involved in funding of Hamas and in their war crimes. And these are th the three major banks in South Africa. So this, this came out, that research that was conducted by the Jerusalem Post staff, they actually came across this unbelievable information, which uh, until today, nobody even would have dreamt that this would have been possible. But it, it is such a scandal to think that these three banks have Jewish blood on their hands and they've been funding Hamas. I don't know if and the news has broken in South Africa. I don't know if people realize, but APSA, Nedbank, and Standard Bank would be totally ashamed that they have Jewish blood on their hands and they've been funding Hamas for a long time already. And at least the truth has come out. But Rav, I think this you'll be able to see more clearly. This is the Mishpacha, and on the yeah. cover, it's last week's edition, both in Hebrew and in English, it's got our chief rabbi. And so many patients came up to me, so many patients, because they read the Hebrew Mishpacha, and some read the English, and they said, wow, what an incredible person. What a courageous man this is. Isn't he scared for his life? But he's, he's not only did he come out against the Pope, but against the leader of South Africa and what he did and what he speaks and he's so open about it. And you know, Rav, I'll tell you, I am so proud of our chief rabbi, and I'm so proud of the South African Jewish community that has stood so firm in their support for Jews living in Israel and Am Israel. And you can all be so very, very proud. And I'll tell you, it is so appreciated here in Israel. It really is. So tomorrow, tomorrow they're going to give the uh, initial findings at the International Criminal um, <clears throat> Court. And uh, Naradi Panda, yeah. the foreign minister, is spending millions, taking a whole team to, to The Hague to hear the... I mean, it, it's another scandal. They, people don't have enough money to survive in South Africa, but the leadership who spent millions and millions on, on this case, which has got nothing to do with South Africa, but the foreign minister is coming to The Hague to hear the, the findings. So it's a UN organization, so we don't have much hope that they, they'll be impartial. In fact, uh, many say that we should never have even mm, approached them in the first place when we should never have been there. We should never have uh, stated our case because it's so ludicrous, the case. Uh, the people that, that suffered the most out of genocide and now we've been accused of causing the genocide. But, you know, what will be will be. But, Rav, I just want to mention, and I'll end up with this, that I just heard a Pierce Morgan interview with the NHS doctor that's been an NHS doctor for 25 years in England. And he says that the, what happened on the 7th of October was like a punch in the nose. 
And Piers Morgan, who's Irish, he's not Jewish, he said he was like livid. He said, But how can you say alleged attacks? Hamas posted it on their own websites. They were proud to post their own videos. And yet you're having people that are denying. Just like you have the Holocaust deniers, you're going to have now people denying what happened on Simpsons Torah. And what's even more frightening, in London, a few days ago, there were a group of Israelis walking and they were speaking Hebrew. And they were attacked by a mob in Leicester Square, in the middle of London. And I have very close friends in Toronto who feel very unsafe. People in Sydney that are also feeling unsafe. So at least, unfortunately, in South Africa, people feel a bit more safe. But in our opinion, to think that the banks in South Africa are funding the murder of Jews, I don't know if it's so okay. I really don't. And I don't know what the solution is. But, um, you know, it's to be shvat, and it's a miracle as well. And it's right Hashem, you know, Hashem will, 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 he always will save us. And he's chosen people. And um, we will so come I'm out sure of this stronger. Okay. Looking <laughs> forward to your, your, your shia, Rav. And, and just, we should all just hope for Besarot Avot, only good news. And Bezrat Hashem, you know, I'm Israel Chai. And we yeah. are just, and the last thing, Rav, I want to just tell you 20 South African Olim came to Israel on Friday last week, a week ago. So people are making Aliyah at this time because this is the place where all Yidin should be. But just remember what I explained on Sunday that Tu Bishvat is a time that things change for the Jewish people. You know, the only hope that we have when it's really dark, that's when come. And that's what we saw in this parsha we'll see. So Bezrat Hashem, Besorot Tovot, Dr. Lez. Thank you, Rav. Shakwa for all the update. We're going to start the show. Jeffrey, don't forget to unmute yourself. I would like to dedicate the show in a soul of Esther Kaden Bat Ketia, Mordechai Ben Rahma, Tamar Bat Zehava, Rav Avram Hayim Ben Eliezer Yaakov, Yaakov Salomon Ben Farha, Shosha Bluma Bat Mordechai Bezalel, Eitan. Ben Keren ve Avishai Nae, Malka Regina Bat Joya, Kesti Gurdria Bat Parhanish Matan Piet Shura Bzurahim. Also, I would like to dedicate the show in health of all the soldiers that got injured, all the Jewish people that don't that need Refua Shlema, amongst them Menashenaji Ben Parhali Orovat Miriam, Harab Moshe Ben Bayabatia, Harab Moshe Ben Devora, Harab Shlomo Yuda Ben Dalia, Harab Avram Ben Marina, Devora Bat Esther. Shayna Kayla Bat Hana Mordechai David Ben Lea Haim Nahum Ben Pesa Reza Kohen Ahuva Kaden Bat Tali Esther Baruch Ben Sara Hiena Yosef Haim Yonatan Ben Iris Pesa Hitchhak Ben Ela Lea Bat Rahel Please God and for the protection of all the soldiers of Israel Rabota, we starting Parashat Beshalach Bil Shabbos We're going to read Parashat Beshalach, Parashat Beshalach is one of the famous parashiyot that, that I love. It's actually the most parasha that I really enjoy to read it. It's not because it's my bar mitzvah portion, not at all. It's because we'll see in the end of the Shaul, and I'll explain what is the secret behind it and why we enjoy Parashat Shira. That Shabbos called Shabbat Shira, the Shabbos of singing, because there is the song of the sea, as Yashir Moshe of Israel. But let's start the show. We in Parashat Beshalah. Vayehi Beshalah paro et ha'am. Velo naham Elohim derech eretz pilishtim. Ki karov hu. Ki amar Elohim. Peni nachem ha'am. It happened when Pharaoh sent out the people that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines because it was near. For God said, perhaps the people reconsider when they see a war 
and they will return to Egypt. Shukra, Jeffrey, beautiful. We have to understand what's happening here. Like you all understand that Akadosh Baruch didn't want to take the children of Israel through the cross, the land of Lishtim. Question number one that we have to ask, the Torah tell us, Pen inahemaram birota minhama, that the might the Jewish people when they see a war, they gonna be frightened. Okay. Question number one that we have to ask right at the beginning, it says like this Vayehi, the word Vayehi. We all know that Hazal tell us in the Gemara in Masechet Megillah, in page ten, folio two. Wherever the word Vayahi referring to sorrow and agony and pain. The Mefarshim ask, I don't understand what sorrow and agony you can see. We're talking in this parsha. Pharaoh actually and his soldier drowning in the sea. Bene Israel have the miracle, the only nation in the world that have the splitting of the sea. No other nation have that. B'nai Israel now, that's the beginning of them becoming a nation. they free. What is pain and sorrow and agony? I'm actually going to bring two opinions, or actually three opinions, because some of them I'm going to keep for Shabbos. What pain and sorrow and agony the Torah is speaking about? What Hazal tried to tell us, wherever the word Vayehi, referring to pain and sorrow. So, say the Or Haim HaKadosh, Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, born in the city of Sali, 328 years ago. The Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, something extraordinary. He said you have to read carefully what it say. Look what it say. Vayehi Beshalah Paro Etaam Haam. That means the nation. What it means, the nation? What it means, the nation? The Mefarshim explain like this. The Mefarshim explain it say in a, in a, in a Zohar. The Zohar Kadosh explained that wherever the word Haam, the nation, referring to the multi nation. When Bnei Israel left Egypt, the Gam Erev Rav Alaitam Erev Rav, it means the multination. What it mean a multination? Quickly, not in depth. Multination is those that converted for the sake of not really believing in Akadosh Baruch They have a motive. Say, say the Zohar Akadosh, and bringing it, Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, it say, look. That means, you know why it's referring to pain and sorrow and agony? Because the multi-nation, they the one that make the golden cup. They the one that complain about the manna. They the one that cause Moshe Rabbeinu to hit the rock. They the one that complaining in Mara when they did, when they have a bit of water. Vayalonu ha'am al Moshe. That means that the multi-nation, they was the one that caused so much chores and havoc because they well, didn't how are you? for the sake of... But, yeah, and if considering the situation, I need, I need to mute because I see that there's a noise at the back. Yes, it's muted. Sorry. So, when it says the nation, it's come to tell us that it's referring to the multination that they didn't convert because they believe in Akadosh Baruch. Hu. The main reason that they converted because they have a motive, and that's what it says Vayehi. Another interpretation that brought by the Mefarshim, why it says Vayehi, Hazal in Gemara in Masechet Megillah. In page uh, 10, there they explain, uh, page 10, folio 2 also, there they explain 
that you know why it was pain and sorrow? To see that the Egyptian going to be drowning in a sea. After all, the Egyptian, as much that they was wicked, they were still a creation of Akadosh Baruch Hu. And that's what it said. Akadosh Baruch Hu saw them drowning, and that caused a pain and agony. Another interpretation, according to the Pshad, Hazal say, you know what it means? Listen to the word, the pain and the agony, actually, that Pharaoh and his nation suddenly say, whoa, what did we do? We allowed the children of Israel to leave Egypt. Who's going to be now our slave? Who's going to do all the dirty job in Egypt? That means the pain and the sorrow was also to Pharaoh and his nation. How they can allow the nations that were slave for so many years to leave Egypt. And that's why it starts Vayehi. Ezrat Hashem on Shabbos, I'll bring a different interpretation. Why is it pain and sorrow and agony? And then the Pasuk says something very interesting. Velo Naham. Elohim derech eretz pelishtim. It means Akadosh Baruch Hu didn't want to take the children of Israel through the land of Plishtim. Why didn't want to take them through the land of Eretz Plishtim? The Pasuk say, Pen yinachem ha'am birotam min hama v'shavu mitzrayim. My, the nation, again, Pen yinachem ha'am. Might the nation will see, okay, that there is a war and they will want to, they will be afraid and they want to return to Eretz Mitzrayim. So according to the Pshat of the Dvarim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't want to take the children of Israel through the, air, the land of Eretz Plishtim. Why? Because they might going to see a war and they're going to return to the land of Egypt. That's how it sounds on a Pshat of the Dvarim. The Al Sheikh Hakadosh, Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh. Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh, born in a city of Andripoli. Andripoli, it's what we call today Andripolia in Turkey. Okay, he born around 517 years ago, plus minus. And in his uh, commentary on the Torah, it's a book that's called Torah Moshe. He explained like this. He says, look what it says again in the pasuk. And that will help you to understand. It's a penny in a hemaram. My the nation gonna be afraid. It's come to tell you. Say Rabbi Haim, eh, Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh, the Al Sheikh Hakadosh. He say, penny in a hemaram. You know who was frightened? Who didn't have a muna in a kadosh baruchu? It's the multi nation. The Zohar Hakadosh. Uh, in uh, Sefer Shmot that we're reading, there in chapter 45, you want to see verse 2, uh, uh, ch uh, chapter 42, verse 2, uh, yeah, verse 2, page 2, if you want to see, there it said that wherever the word nation, it's referring to the multi-nation. You say, you know what's happening here? Akadosh Baruch Hu didn't want to take the children of Israel through the land of Eretz Plishtim, you know why? Because the emuna of the multi-nation is not so strong. And he was frightened that if he take them through the land of Eretz Plishtim and will be a war, the children of Israel will see the multi-nation frightened and running back to Egypt. That's going to make the heart a bit, you know, it's going to weaken the heart. So Akadosh Baruch Hu knew that the children of Israel, they have full amuna. How do we know? That they follow Akadosh Baruch Hu to the wilderness, where there is no food, where there is no water. Ve'at Aron ve'ariya. That means Akadosh Baruch Hu, remember that, that we follow his order to go to the wilderness, even though there is nothing. So the Muna of the children of Israel is very strong. But you know who doesn't have such a strong Muna said the Al Sheikh Kadosh is the multi nation. How do I learn that? Because the Torah tells us. 
תן ינחם עם, the my day nation, with a ידיעה, העם, day nation. That's referring to the air of love. הקדוש ברוך הוא didn't want the multi-nation to weaken the heart of the children of Israel. Why? Because after all, they were slaves until now. Now they're going to see a war. They have no clue what they do. And they see the multi-nation running. That's going to cause a lot of havoc amongst the children of Israel. And that's say, the Al-Sheikh HaKadosh, you know who's the one that was frightened? That's going to cause a lot of havoc is the multi-nation. And now we can understand how's the first verse of the Parsha, what does it speak about? Let's go for the next verse. And look what it says. Vayasov Elohim et ha'am derech ha'midbar yamsuf v'hamushim alu b'nei Yisrael me'eretz mitzrayim. So God turned the people toward the way of the wilderness to the Sea of Reeds. The children of Israel were armed when they went out, when they went up from Egypt. Okay. Very good. Beautiful. Jeffrey, I have to tell you, you help me with the way that you're reading. Because for me, that what I want to translate. The way that you read it actually make it more sense to me. The Torah tells us that when the children of Israel left Egypt, okay, they turned towards the Sea of Weed, and there was arm. The Mephashim immediately come and ask, wait, 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 wait. Rachabiki, wait a minute. Armed with what? Armed with what? Okay. So there is different interpretation. The word hamushim, the word hamushim, you can translate it as armed, and you can translate it ehad mi hamushim, one of 50. So there is different commentary. The one of the idea of the commentary that bring, that they tell us that you know how many people left the land of Eretz Mitzrayim? One of fifty. What does it mean? One of fifty of the children of er, of the children of Israel left Egypt. It said that mean only twenty percent of the Jewish the, the children of Israel left Egypt. The rest, that it's eighty percent, down a plague of darkness, and that's what it say. The Hamushim alu bene Israel. Hamushim, one of fifty. That means one of every 50 from Bnei Israel didn't one die fifth. on the plague of Hoshua. One fifth. Sorry? One fifth. F I F T. Sorry. One, one fifth. That means come to teach us that only 20% <clears throat> from the children of Israel left the land of Eretz Mitzrayim. Isn't that amazing? That's with the word Hamushim, where we learn. Another interpretation, like it say, that there was armed, proper arm. Rashi Akadosh, Rabbi Shlomo Itzhaki, born in a city of Troa 984 years ago in the north of France. He said, no, no, no. The verse say, the Hamushim alu bene Israel me'eret Mitzrayim. That means that the children of Israel was armed. Armed, physically armed. Come Rabbi Shlomo Halevi al Kabet. Rabbi Shlomo Halevi al Kabet, Rabotai, he born in a city of Saloniki. He born in uh, Saloniki, is the city in uh, Greece. He born around 519 years ago, plus minus. He wrote the book Manot Halevi. Rabbi Shlomo Levi al Kabetz, by the way, just for general knowledge, he wrote to us the song that we read, that we sing on Friday night, Lecha Dodi. That we sing every every Friday night, Lecha Dodi. There is a very interesting story 
about that song. Uh, I'll tell you, because there is Kedush Hashem here. It was a Muslim guy in Eretz Israel that he grown up in a village. And every time that he used to hear that song, he didn't understand, but this song spoke to him. And as he grew up, he realized that this song speaking to him somewhere deep inside his heart. And he decided that he's going to see what is it? Why is the Jewish people on Friday night singing in the shul le Chadodi? And he gone one time to the shul and he heard them singing. He couldn't understand. He, he almost fainted. Mama fainted. And he gone home and he was frightened to tell his mother and his father that he want to convert. So he decided that he's going to convert. And he looked for a rabbi. It was, I'm making the story short. And the rabbi decided to convert him. They agreed to convert him, and he gone through the process. While he was in a process, he was close to his mother, and he said to her, listen, I'm going to convert. And they spoke, what, wah, wah. And she said to him, how come? And he said to her, there's a song that called Lechad Odi. And that's what make me decide that I need to convert. The mother said to him, let me tell you the truth, my boy. I'm a Jewish woman. I married your dad that is a Muslim. But for my dynasty, I belong somewhere along to Rabbi Shlomo al kabetz that wrote that song. And his merit standing for you. And I support you. I'm not going to tell what you told me. I'm going to keep it in secret. And that boy converted just because Lechadodi. The power. So Rabbi Shlomo al Kabet was a great Kabbalistic that lived, obviously, in a 14th century in Tzfat. And he asked a question. He said, I don't understand. Rashi, you saying that there was fully armed but the children of Israel were slaves. Who taught them how to hold weapon? Who told them how to use the weapon? From where they have weapon? Say Rabbi Shlomo al Kabez, I'll tell you what was the secret weapon of the Jewish people. I'll tell you. It say if you look at Bereshit Rabbah, the Midrash Bereshit Rabbah uh, tell us like this Ra'a Yam Vayanos, we're singing it, that Shirat Ayam. They saw the sea, saw, and he ran away. He ran away from what? Se Hamushim, Va'alu Hamushim Bene Israel. You know what was their weapon? Their weapon was the bones of Yosef at Shadik. That means that when they come, to the Sea of Reeds. You know what was the weapon that split the sea? It's the bone of yourself. That's how they was uh, born. That, sorry, that was their weapon. The bone of yourself was the weapon of Bene Israel. He said that Nahon, that Rashi said that they was armed, but they was armed to it what? With the holiness of Yosef at Sadiq that protect them and guard them and help them to cross the sea and to help the sea to split for 12 lines. Okay? So what do we see from here? We see that Bnei Israel actually have a secret weapon, the tzaddikim. But we have to understand Rashi. Rashi speak codes, and he speak sometimes pshat. I saw another interpretation. Said the Mepharshim, do you know what weapon they had? It was a proper weapon. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they took with them the weapon. They took weapon. Yes, they took physical weapon, sword and bow and arrow and etc. They took physical weapon. And I prove it to you, said the Mepharsha, because Ben Israel needed to fight later on with Amalek, with Sihon Melech Haimori and Og Melech Abashan. How did they fight with them? How did they fight with all of this? They fight with them with proper weapon. 
נכון? That they was in train. That's a Kadosh Baruch Hu helped them to win the war. So we see from here that there is three different interpretation what it means Hamushim. Vehamushim alu b'nei Yisrael me'eretz Mitzrayim. From the land of Egypt. On. What did they was on? Let's continue with uh, chapter 14, verse 2. And in verse 2, we see something very interesting. Here, the Torah tells us that it sounds like the children of Israel was confused. Confused of what? We'll see. Let's read it. Daber el bene Israel vayashubu vayahanu mifne pi hachirot. בין מגדול ובין הים, לפני בעל צפון מחוכו, תחנו על הים. Speak to the children of Israel, and let them turn back and encamp before Pi Hahirot, between Migdol and the sea, before Baal Tzafon. You shall encamp opposite it by the sea. Okay, what's happening here? Let's explain. After Bnei Israel left Egypt, there was in a journey to Eretz Israel. Akadosh Baruch Hu says, suddenly, no. Said to Moshe Rabbeinu, stop. Now I want you to return back. I want you to return back and I want you to camp. Where do I want you to camp? I want you to camp like this. I want you to camp Al Piahirot between Migdol and the sea, and Ben Migdol Ben Ayam, opposite the place that called Baal Tzafon. All the Mefarshim ask, what's happening? Why did Ben Israel have to go forward? And then Akadosh Baruch Hu said to Moshe Rabbeinu, stop, return back to a place that called Migdol, between Migdol and the sea. Where is Baal, Ahirot, uh, Baal Tzafon? I want you to park. What is the Hidush here? Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu say to Moshe Rabbeinu to do all of that? So I saw a beautiful commentary that I would like to share with you and say the Mepharshim like this. The Mepharshim say that when Pharaoh saw that the children of Israel leaving, one of the commentary, one of the idea is that he say, you know what? Thanks God, that's it, it's enough. Let them go. Let them go. I have 10 plagues. I don't want any more headache. Egypt is finished. Stay the Mepharshim, but when Pharaoh saw that Ben Israel suddenly returning back and camping between Migdol and the sea, opposite Baal Tzafon. Baal Tzafon was uh, Avodah Zarah. Say Pharaoh to his advisor, look, the God of Israel managed to win all the God in Egypt. But the Baal Tzafon, it's Avodah Zarah that we make just by the Sea of Reeds. They couldn't escape them. He won the God of Hasbe Shalom of Israel. And he forced them to come back. They couldn't they managed to go, but then he pulled them back. Let's go and catch with them and bring them back to slavery. Said the Mepharshim, you know why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu done it? HaKadosh Baruch Hu done it because he wanted to take revenge on Pharaoh and his advisor. Why is it? He said like this. He said, Pharaoh drowned the children of Israel where? In and out. Akadosh Baruch Hu wanted to do midah keneged midah, measure for measure. What is the measure for measure? Say like this. Say the Mepharshim. Say the Mepharshim. Akadosh Baruch Hu wanted to confuse Egypt. Wanted to confuse Pharaoh. Because he wanted them to come where? He wanted them to come back. How did he going to draw them? Because he saw Pharaoh give up. Said the Mepharshim, what's happening here? 
הקדוש ברוך הוא want to Pharaoh and the rest of his nation to drown in a sea and to bring the spoil, the gold, the silver, the gemstone that the Kadosh Baruch Hu promised Abraham Avinu and Brit Ben Abitarim and a covenant of part. How I'm going to do it? I'm going to confuse them. How did he confuse them? By that, that he saw that Ben Israel continue and then suddenly they return back. But all that was either worshiper was a pagan said to his nation, you see, they got Conwin Baal Chapon. Let's run quick. Let's catch them. No, we bring them back. HaKadosh Baruch Hu done it, measure for measure, that he will draw them in the Yamsuf, in the Sea of Reeds. Why? Because they drowned his children many years before. Where? In the Niles. And that's what it said Nebuchim him. Nebuchim confused? No. He confused who? He confused Pharaoh and his soldiers to follow the children of Israel. Now we can understand the verse, what it means, Nevochim him. What it means, Nevochim, they're confused. But who was confused? Not the children of Israel. Who was confused is Pharaoh and his nation. Okay? And that's what it says. Tahanu. Okay, let's continue. And we're going to go to verse 10. And in verse 10, we see something very strange here. Who paro, sorry, who paro, not the, who paro, a kriv, vaisu bene Israel et enehem, vene mitzraim, nosea harehem, vayir u meod, vaitsaku bene Israel ladonai. Pharaoh approached. <coughs> the children of Israel, raised their eyes, and behold, Egypt was journeying after them, and they were very frightened. The children of Israel cried out to Hashem. Ay, Rabotai, how much this verse, mm -hmm. if, we, if we now, in Eretz Israel for the last 30 days, if we lift up our eyes to HaKadosh Baruch everything in change. The Mefarshim said that Paro he crib and Paro approach. Approach what? The Mefarshim say. And then it say that the children of Israel lift up the eyes to Akadosh Baruch to heaven. What is the connection? Paro approach. Who did Paro approach? Who did we he approach? Say the Mefarshim like this. According to the Pshat of the Dvarim, he come closer to them. That means that the children of Israel saw behind them the Egyptian, Pharaoh and his army. That's on the Pshat of the Dvarim. And they was frightened. Say, the Mefarshim, I tell you, the Midrash say, what's telling us here, there is actually here, there is here Drash and Remus together, that the Pasuk tell us that Pharaoh was the one that brought the children of Israel closer to their father in heaven, that they were so afraid of him that caused, he caused the children of Israel to be to approach to their father in heaven, to start screaming to Akadosh Baruch Hu. That means say and the Mefarshim something extraordinary. It's come to teach us that the children of Israel in a time of die straight, when they see that they can't see any more solution, only then they cry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I saw a commentary of the book that called Avne HaEzer. Who wrote it? It's not sure. There is speculation. That's why I'm not saying who say that. Because when I've done the research, there's different opinion who wrote it. So I'm frightened to say that it's him. But in the book, he said like this, and I saw it in my own eyes. He said like this. He said that haval shame that the children of Israel become closer to Hakadosh Baruch Hu only when they die straight. When the only when they see danger, he said that the children of Israel have to remember that even when thing is good, to come closer to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Not to wait for people like Pharaoh 
people like Lo Aleno, Machemo, Vezichro, Hitler, Adolf Hitler, Hamanitsky and his friends, Yemachem. Now the Hamas, not any different. It said not to wait to be in a time of danger, in a time of die straight, and then to lift up our eyes to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Say, the Avnei Ezer, you know what is the best thing? That even when thing is good, even when thing is beautiful for us, that's when we should lift up our eyes to Akadosh Baruch Hu. But what happened in this verse was sparrow that brought us closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu. That means he approach, make us approach Akadosh Baruch Hu. He make us closer to the Almighty. Why? Because when we saw the Egyptian behind us, in the front of us, what did we saw? The sea. As I'll explain in a midrash, listen to that, that each wave, each wave was Hamishimama, Hamishimama, 25 meters. According to other opinion, Me'ama, each wave was 50 meters. About 50 meters. Each wave. The children of Israel didn't know. In the front of them, this day is the, the sea is so wild. Behind them, the Egyptian. They realize we don't have, we don't have a chance. Let's cry to Akadosh Baruch and say Hazan. That's Paro. Make them come closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu, and they start screaming to the Almighty. Let's continue with chapter 15, verse 2. I'm skipping quite a bit, I know, but in verse 2, it says something very interesting. Here we're talking about the Shirat Ayam. In Shirat Ayam, there is something that we have to understand in verse 2, and I would like to to try to explain it. It says like this. Look what it says. Ozi vezimratia vayehili lishua ze eli veanvehu elohe avi vearomemeu. The might and vengeance of God was salvation for me. This is my God. And I will build him a sanctuary, the God of my father, and I will exalt him. Okay. There's different interpretation. Watch Heim behind it. The Zohar Kadosh in page uh, 52, folio 2, bring a lot of interpretation. And he said like this, the Zohar Kadosh, and also the Midrash bring it, they say that what it means, Ozi vezimratia vahili lishua. Ze Eli, that's my God. Okay? That's my God. I need to sanctify. Okay? And I need to praise Him. What does it mean? Rabotai, there is here different interpretation. I would like to bring first the Gemarot. The Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, page uh, Kuf Lamed Gimel. Uh, Kuf Lamed Gimel is uh, 133. 133, uh, uh, 2. 23. Page 2. Listen what it says. Hazal in the Gemara explained that verse according to the Pshat and the Drash together, funny enough. And what they say? Hazal in the Gemara say, that means when you do a mitzvah in the sake of heaven, do it in the best way. What does it mean? Hazal say in a Gemara, like this. Hazal say that a person builds a sukkah, okay, must create a beautiful sukkah. That means he must decorate the sukkah the best. He buy lulav and etrog, he must buy the best that he can afford, obviously. A person buy a shofar, a person buy a tzitzit, a person buy a tefillin, must buy the best. Say Hazal, that's what is uh, Hazal in the Gemara Masechet Shabbat, 133.2. Say Hazal, hitna'e lefanai ba mitzvot. Whenever you do a mitzvot, do it 
זה אלי ועם והוא. That mean do it to the best of your ability. Spend the money that you can afford to do the mitzvah properly. That's one idea. Come the Zohar HaKadosh and the Midrash that I mentioned. The Zohar HaKadosh in page uh, uh, Nun Hei, that's mean 55-2, uh, said the Zohar HaKadosh, I'll tell you what's happening. He said, when the children of Israel were standing in, after the splitting of the sea, when they start singing the song of the sea, they they say ze eli ve'an ve'hu. That mean that when the sea split it, the heaven also split it. And Hazal say in the Midrash and the Zohar say that something extraordinary. I would like to read it to you, and it say like this: Lo zacha yehiskel ben buzi lirot. Okay. No. Uh, yeah. לא זכה יחזקאל בן בוזי לראות מה שראתה שפחה על הים. What does it mean? That the prophet Ezekiel didn't merit to see what the servant made may merit to see on a splitting of the sea. When the splitting of the sea occurred, הקדוש ברוך הוא opened the heaven. And they saw the angel. They saw beautiful. What's happening in the heaven? In the seven heaven. said that the prophet Yehezkel, Ezekiel didn't merit to see it. That was a great prophet. That he's speaking about the resurrection of the day, the world of Amageddon. Even him didn't merit to see. Come the Mepharshim and say, how come? How can it be that Yehezkel bin Buzi didn't merit to see? He said something extraordinary. said the Zohar HaKadosh and said the Mepharshim that the children, the little children say to their parents when we was, when we was in our mother's uh, womb, we, uh, womb we, we saw that angel that taught us the Torah. Yeah, that's angel that you see in heaven. That's the angel that taught us Torah. Say Hazar, how come that a maid servant managed to see what the prophet Yehezkel did? Then? So according to the Pshat of the Dvarim, I don't want to go into depths for it, just for us to understand that it's to explain to us, say the Mepharshim, that time that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made the miracle, he needed to show the nation What's happening? He needed to build the Emunah. He needed to strengthen them. He needed to show the Jewish people that he is with them. And that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu showed them. Because it was the merit and the moment that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to show him to strengthen the Emunah and the belief on them. That's how the Mepharshim said. What is it mean? It's come to tell you something extraordinary. Come to tell you how important is it, the splitting of the sea, the miracle of the splitting of the sea. To teach us that when we say, Ozi v'zim ratiyah, we're singing it every morning in Filat Shacharit. And then we say, Ze eli v'an v'hu, is to teach us here two different things. Number one, when you do mitzvot, do the best to your ability. Whatever you can do, Afford, buy the best lulav. You build the sukkah, make, decorate it the most beautiful that you can. Number three, when it's come to buy lulav, etrog, arbaat aminim, okay, to buy a tzitzi, don't just try to buy kosher. Try to buy mufhar. That means the best. As much that your pocket can afford. But when you do mitzvot, And then the Farshim explained, he's giving you the money. You're using his money to do the mitzvot. So what are you worried? It's not your money. He's giving you the money. Buy. Because he'll pay you back. I would like to continue to go to chapter 16. 
verse 15, chapter 16, verse 15. And I would like to discuss something very interesting here about the manna. But we have to learn it from the Pasuk, but we have to use the Zera Shimshon, Rabbeinu Shimshon Haim Nachmani. Let's read. Vayiru bene Israel, vayomru ish elahav, elahav. Manhu, ki lo yadanu mahu, vayomer Moshe alehem. Hu, alehem asher natan Adonai lachem leokla. The children of Israel saw and said to one another, It is food, for they did not know what it was. Moshe said to him, them, This is the food that Hashem has given you for eating. Okay, what's happening? So first of all, let's do a bit of history what's happening. On a 16th of the year, in the year 2448 from the creation, it was a Sunday. According to some of the, according to Rashi, according to different opinion, it was Thursday. There is a mahlokit if it was Sunday or Thursday. Some, according to some opinion, say no, it wasn't on Tedzain, on a 16, it was on the 18th. 18 of the year, that's when the manna start coming down. The first time that the manna came, according to most of the commentaries, and that's where I brought Dafka the 16 of the year, in the year 2448 from the creation on a Sunday, Rashi also bringing it in the Gemara, Masechet Shabbat, Peizayin Amud Bet, Peizayin 87.2. There, if you want to see, look at Rashi. Look at Rashi there. He said that the manna start coming down on uh, on a Sunday. Okay. The manna came down. And the people, the children of Israel, didn't understand what is that food. Until Moshe Rabbeinu tell them, this is, okay, the food that the Almighty, that's the food that you eat and that the Almighty given you to eat. Given you in the past, didn't give you now. Come the Zera Shimshon and say, Wait, wait, oh, I don't understand. The Zera Shimshon, Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nachmani, he born in the city of Modena in the north of Italy 318 years ago. In his book that called Zera Shimshon, in uh, verse 19, he asked the question. He said, What it mean? Why did Moshe Rabbeinu say to the children of Israel, who alehem asher natan Adonai lachem. That means that's the bread the Almighty given you to eat. Why in the past? It should be in a present. Not then. Now. He given you. Not that he give you in a past. That's the question of the Zerah Shimshon. Why is it talking about the past? Ask the Mefarshim. Ask Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nachman. And he explained Rabotai, beautiful answer that he actually bring the Rashi HaKadosh, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhaki. And Rashi HaKadosh bring the Gemara in Masechet Kiddushim in page uh, 38 1. Lamet Chet Amud Alef, 38 folio 1. It says that you know when the children of Israel left Egypt, they have to when they left, they didn't have a chance to bake the bread properly. It was unleavened bread, but we call it matzot. Hazal call it ogiot, lechem, whatever you want to call it. Call it ogiot, it's cookies. Some people call it bread, the unleavened bread. He see that the Kadosh Baku made a miracle, and on that bread that they took out from Egypt, a Kadosh Baku brought the taste of the manna. The Hazal in a Gemara. In that case, the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, they already tasted taste of the manna and the bread. And that's why, said the Zerah Shimshon, 
you say like this. That's why it's mentioned in a verse that what's happened here. He said it's mentioned here that Natan, what it means Natan in the past. Why is it in the past? Because when you left Egypt, you already tasted it, the manna in your bread that you took, the unleveled bread. Said the Zera Shimshon, that's why it's in the past. And he brings proof to it from the Gemara Masechet Kiddushim. Listen to that. Page 38, folio 1. But if that's not enough, he says, I'll show you. Rashi HaKadosh himself say in verse 35, okay, in, a, in chapter 16, verse 35, that you know that when the children of Israel uh, left Egypt, they have the taste of the bread, the taste of the manna in their bread. It says that and there he explained when it was the mahloke that it was if it's happened on a, on a, on a 16 or the 15 of Iyar if the men start coming down to teach us. You know why Moshe Rabbeinu talk about the past? I tell you why. Because the taste of the mena, Akadosh Baruch make a miracle that was he put it inside the unleavened bread. Nahon that the manna didn't come down, but the taste, they already tasted it. That's the Hidush here, what he spoke about the past. Let's go to verse 27. And here uh, I say that I'm going to explain why I love Parashat Shira, Parashat Beshalah. This is one of the reasons. And look what it says. יצאו מן העם ללקוט ולא מצאו. It happened on the seventh day that some of the people went out to gather and they did not find. Okay. What's happening here? First I'll explain. Moshe Rabbeinu told the children of Israel that the men are going to come down from Sunday to Friday. On Shabbos, the men are not going to come down. Mena, whatever you collect on Friday, going to be enough for you for Friday and for Saturday. Because on Shabbos, men are not going to come down from heaven. By the way, the Rashba asked this question. And he said like this, what? Brocha, you say on the manna, because we know the manna is a bread, but you can't say motzi lechem mina aretz because it didn't come from the earth. He said motzi lechem mina shamayim, but the kadosh who brought the bread, he took it out of the heaven. That just for just for general knowledge that the gemara there asked the rashi asked, what happened on the seventh day? It was people that came out and they wanted to collect manna but they didn't found the Torah tells what's happening here Hazal in the Midrash explained that those people that gone out that was Datan and Aviram Datan and Aviram was two brothers that the Egyptian put them inside the mortar instead of brick but Moshe Rabbeinu, with his mercy and compassion, pulled them out. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to him, Moshe, you think that I don't know that these two are going to give you a headache? But you have more me mercy and compassion than me, you think? Take him. And let's see how much Soros they're going to give you. And we know that the Tan and Aviram never stopped giving Soros to Moshe Rabbeinu until... They've been swallowed in Mahloket Korah and his followers. Korah and his followers. That they've been swallowed on the, in the ground. Okay. What's happened here? The Tan and Aviram say, we're going to prove that Moshe Rabbeinu talking nonsense. We're going to tell the nation that he's talking nonsense. What are we going to do? We're going to collect a lot of men on Friday. And early, early, early Shabbos morning, we're going to spread it. 
And then we're going to say we've gone out to the field and here we found manna. And there's plenty manna. You see, Moshe Rabbeinu is a liar. So that's what they done. They wake up early morning on Shabbos and they spread the, the manna and they gone home. And then they wanted to, they suddenly decide that they're going to go when it's light. And suddenly the manna disappear. Where's the manna that you put? Disappear. Say Hazal in a Midrash. HaKadosh Baruch Hu send the birds. And the birds eaten at all and nothing left. And that's what it said, the law matzu. It's u mina'am lilkot. Again, their nation. Datan and Aviram. Some people said that there was the Arab Rab. Okay. Say the Magen Avraham. Listen. The Magen Avraham is Rabbi Avraham Abli. Rabbi Avraham Abli born in Lita around 387 years ago, plus minus. And he said like this, there is a custom that on Shabbat Shira, this coming Shabbos, that the, you should prepare on Friday night and put a lot of crumb on bread in the garden. That in the morning when the birds go to sleep early, as it gets dark, before Shabbos, put the bread outside because the, bear, the, the birds already gone to sleep. And early morning, they can benefit from the bread that you left for them in a garden. Why? To show gratitude to what they done in Shabbat Shira when the Tan and Abiram wanted to prove Has Shalom that Moshe Rabbeinu is lying. That's the Minag. It's a custom. It's not Halacha. That's Magen Avram. I saw a beautiful commentary on that that brought Hai Rabbi Haim Palaji. Rabbi Haim Palaji, born in the city of Izmir in Turkey. And Rabbi Haim Palaji say like this. Rabbi Haim Palaji says something extraordinary. He born around 136 years ago. And he said that one of the custom yesterday was to eat barley. On, uh, on Tubishva to eat barley. Why is that? What is hiding behind it? He said also on Shabbat Shira to eat barley. It's a segula for Parnassah. If people want segula for Parnassah to eat barley on Tubishva, where did you come with that? He said, I'll tell you where I learned that. I learned that what David HaMelech say in Sefer Tehilim, in a book of Tehilim, in chapter 147, okay, say David HaMelech in verse 14, halav Sorry, Helev Hitim Yasbi'ech. Helev Hitim Yasbi'ech. It said that from that verse you learn Helev Hitim, Hitim is Bali. Okay, that's going to make you fool. If you want good Parnasa, that in Tubishvant you should eat Bali. Also, this coming Shabbos, it's Shabbat Shira that we have to prepare the food before Shabbos to put outside on the garden, so on Shabbos morning, the 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 birds going to benefit from it, what? to show them gratitude to what they done, okay, to prove that Moshe Rabbeinu, what he say, it's 100%, and what the Tan and Aviram tried to do, to prove that Has Shalom, Moshe Rabbeinu lying, that there is men are coming from heaven, that we show gratitude to those that even a bird's an animal to teach us about the Musar here that we have to show gratitude and the Ezrat Hashem that we sing to Akadosh Baruch Hu this Shabbos and Hazal tell us that from Tisha from Tu Be'av after Tu Be'av everything starting to change physically in Earth like we explained last Sunday everything in the world starting to change but also, everything starts to change in a spiritual world. And the luck of the Jewish people now starting to change. And by Ezrat Hashem, that we should see miracle, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will say enough to our Torahs, and will send us Mashiach Titkenu speedily in our day, and we should merit to see the building 
of the third Bet Amikdash to see it, to bring our sacrifice. Amen Keni Ratzon. Those of you that enjoy the show, I would like to say, first of all, thank you for joining us. But I'm sure that you have certain questions. So, Bechavod, those of you that have questions, Bechavod. Okay, unmute the microphone and you can ask. Bechavod. Rabbi Frank, how are you? Baruch Hashem, Frank. Erev Tov, how are you? No, fine, fine, Rabbi. I want one or two questions to ask you. You said one of your one of the shatim is that we came out from Egypt with arms, physical arms. Where did we where did, where did we have the time to get it? Because we rushed out. Did we get it oh. in the plague of darkness? Or where did we pick up those arms? Because That's maybe it. it was in the plague of darkness. That's it. So Hazal say that Bene Israel when they left Egypt. They took with them. It doesn't mean that they gone and from house to house to look for it. They already have it. They just took it with them. You understand what I'm saying, Frank? Yes, yes, yes. They say that? Yes, yes, yes. That means it can be maybe on a blood or the plague of darkness. You mm. don't know? When? Okay. They, they took it with them. Hmm. Okay. The Is other question, I, yes, I understand okay. it. The other okay. question I want to ask is, remember you told us about the young boy that with Lachad Odi and he felt that he had it in ah, his mother yes. tongue? The Muslim guy that but, converted. Yes. He actually but, didn't need to convert because... Yes, what I was going to ask. I was going to ask, if his mother was Jewish, he's Jewish. He doesn't have to convert. Yes. Maybe the father didn't know. Let me explain to you. He didn't know. And you know, you have to understand, Nahon is Jewish. Mm -hmm. But according to the Muslim, according to the Muslim, the religion go according to the father. The father, yeah. Not to the father. Mm. Number, number two, number two. Very good question, Frank. And I have to explain that. Mm. That the Muslim do Brit Milan at the age of 13, the same like Ishmael was. But when they do Brit Milah, they don't do Priya. They don't ah. tear the membrane. Yes. So yes. now that this boy decide to convert, even if he have Brit Milah, that's I don't know, because yes. in a story I, I didn't uh, read, they never spoke about ah. it. He still have to go to a Moel, and the, the Moel to do you know. Priya and to do Metzitzat, to draw mm. a bit of mm. blood. You follow? Mm. To be a proper Brit Milah. You follow? Mm. Yes. And then the last question is, remember you said about the um, uh, when it was Shabbos and these two uh, people and, spread the, uh, yes. and, 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 and the birds came on yeah. to do it. Now, yeah. I heard, uh, uh, and I don't know if it's correct, that, okay, this Shabbos, we're going to do it. But on every Shabbos, is you're supposed to feed your your um, animals Animal. before you eat. Yeah, if, if, if they're your animals or that. So um, in merit of that, uh, we can also on Shabbos, I think this is a custom or not more, to throw bread to the birds. Is that right or you're not? No, you're not allowed no. to throw bread to animals that not belong to you. You're eating wild animals. What Hazal say, and you learn it, yes, from in, in Kriyat Shema, that you say that first it say that you should feed your animal, and only yes. then you should eat. So say Correct. Hazal, yes. from here you learn that before you eat, you should feed your own domestic animal that belong that underneath you that depends on you. Say has said the Ariya Kadosh, Rabbi Itzhak Luri Ashkenazi. Rabbi Itzhak Luri Ashkenazi born in, uh, in Yerushalayim close to 490 years ago, plus minus. And he said that if a person have domestic animal and he eats before we feed them, Lo Aleno, there is a decree on him. Before a person sit to eat, if you have dogs, cats, whatever, 
I don't know, domestic animal, you must feed them first. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all. That it says in a tatale behem techa that you should give to your animal, and then he said, I'll call them svata. Okay. So, what does it mean? So, your domestic animal you obligate to feed, but the birds, that the wild birds, they not belong to you. You mustn't feed them on Shabbat. And said them again, Abraham, that Dafka on Shabbat Shira, you prepare it before Shabbos. Before Shabbos, you put it in a garden. And then, Shabbos morning, it's there. Mm. So you didn't mm. feed them. You didn't done yeah. a melacha mm. on Shabbat. But what, what, ha what happens if during the week you've got these birds and you keep on feeding them every day? And they know that every day you are going to feed them. So they you know, so put on can't. Friday night. So put on yeah, Friday night. Okay. Well, okay. okay. Right. But they're Thank not you. yours. They're wild yeah. animals. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but, but, but they, they, they used to come into you every day. It's fine. So let them come. And Friday night, put more just before more. Shabbos. Okay. Yes, Thank, you, yeah. okay. Thank you, Rabbi. Pleasure. Thank you. Any other question? Bechavod, bechavod. Hello, it's Anthony. How are you? Erev Tov, Antonio, I waited for you. How are you? Oh, thanks. Now, this week's portion talks about the crossing of the Red Sea. Nachon. And Nachshon ben Amanadab was the one who went into the sea and up to his neck. The water went up to his neck and then the sea split. So Hazal said Nachshon ben Amanadab. He was from the tribe of Yehuda. Yes. He was the sister of who? Who was his sister? Uh, the I'm wife sure. of Aaron. Was... Aaron. No, the wife of Aaron. Miriam was the sister. And the wife of Aaron. Oh. Okay. So what's happening? Nachshon ben Aminadav, when he saw the wave, the children of Israel was frightened to get into the sea. Nachshon ben Aminadav, he was the first one to enter the sea. And after yeah. him... All the rest of the tribe of Yehuda, and when the children of Israel saw it, they also walked. That's mean that each one gone on his own pathway. You follow? Yes. So he was the first one to enter the sea. And all the tribe of Yehuda went in after him. Yes. And then the rest of the children of Israel, Nahon. Okay. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. What was the name of the wife of Aaron? You didn't tell me. I'm, just, I'm not sure. I'm, Batsheva. I'm actually not Batsheva. sure. Batsheva. Batsheva. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Any other question, Rabota? So that, Any other question? Yes, bro. Uh, just a couple of questions. Bechavod, bechavod. Yeah, bechavod, bechavod. Thank you. Uh, you start. We started off the parsha by saying Vayihi, and uh, yeah. gave certain reasons why it refers to sorrow, pain, agony, Nahon. and. Uh, what? So why do we just start here? Why? Because it was a big a celebration for us in <laughs> this partial when we we came we came, we, we, were, we came through the sea and it was it was amazing. So the thing is this: the the mixed uh, well, also the mixed multitude. That I mean, the the the, the people that were uh, came out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. a, the thing is this: why? Would we say that uh, we were? It was sadness for us um, because the Egyptians drowned and they were humans and what have you. But we celebrated. We actually celebrated when they came out of the water, and so we. It wasn't a sorrow. It, 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 I don't think they got, that had in mind 
although certainly the, 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 the Jewish people had no nothing in mind that uh, the, the gypsies were drowning. They were happy because they were saved. So it, it was not a, uh, it was a celebration. It wasn't uh, uh, one of the reasons uh, is that uh, we were sad because there was sorrow and agony because the humans drowned in the sea, but not from the point of view of B'nai Israel. No. We'll say from a point, point of view, yes. The Midrash say that the angel wanted to say Shira. Shira, they wanted to sing to him. Kadosh Baruch said to them, you're not going to say Shira to me today. Why? Would I create a drown in the sea and you want to say a song to me? No. That's that Bnei Israel sang to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that praised the Almighty that he saved them. You follow? Yeah. The other interpretation is that it was sorrow and agony to who? We say. To the Egyptian. But yes, suddenly indeed. they see that they slay those that used to be the dirty work, the black work, the black jobs. Where are they? They're going out to free. That's why they say, They was the one that felt sorrow and pain and agony. Because they regret, okay, suddenly we left. We don't have anyone to do the dirty job. Yeah. So it was pain and agony to them. Do you follow? Yeah. Yes, yes. One other thing uh, that we, it was Rashi, I believe you mentioned, that said the man came down on a Sunday. Yeah, according to Rashi, yes. According yes. to Rashi, the, the man the manna came down no, no, on no, a Sunday. No, no, no. Now, no, I think Rush is, <laughs> it's not for me to say, but I think Rush is right. <laughs> Why? Because you've got to have, if there was a Sabbath in between during that week, it would have confused everybody. Because this was a lesson that on the Sabbath, we... Uh, we collect two portions on a Friday, and the Sabbath we don't uh, we don't collect. So if it was in in the middle of the week, the Sabbath, it would have been totally confusing. When do they collect the two portions? When uh, for, for for the uh, for that for the um, for a Sabbath? The, a Sabbath yeah. can't be in the middle. Why? Because according to the other Mepharshim, they say no. It was yeah. on a Thursday. On a Thursday. On a Thursday. It start to come down. So on a Thursday, they took one, whatever, Omer la Gulgolet. The, the quantity was Omer la Gulgolet. But on Shabbos, on Friday, Moshe Rabbeinu told them that these men are not going to come down on Shabbos. Therefore, on a Friday, you should take double the amount that you take during the day. What does it mean? That's going to be enough for you for Friday night, Shabbos, until Sunday morning. That's me. That is not confusing. Nachon, that we go according to the opinion of Rashi that bring in a Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, Pei Zayin uh, 87, Folio 2, that it's, mm -hmm. it was on a Sunday. But it's not Because the other Mepharshim, if you look there, there is a big mahloket amongst them, amongst the Mepharshim, because some people say it was a Thursday. According to other opinion, according to other opinion, that they said, listen, it's not correct. It was Yudhet Iyar. Yudhet Iyar is like Baomer, by the way. But they didn't have like Baomer there. But it's, there is a mahloket there. If it was Tetzayin or it was Yudhet, if you look there in a the Gemara, uh, Shabbat. If you want to look at it in depth, look what the Mefarshim say. But Rashi said that it was on a Sunday, and that's the most common. That's what we follow. But it can happen also on a Thursday, it can happen on a Tuesday, because Akadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu, tell them that during the weekday, they only need to take what Omer la Gulgolet, what it's, what it's enough for them. 
But on Shabbos, they must take double the portion. That's going to be enough for them for, number one, for Friday that they took, and for Shabbos. You follow? They used to collect it yeah. early morning on on every day. Friday. Why? Okay. Because when the sun used to come out, it used to melt. Melt it up. Yeah. You follow? D dissipated, yes. Yes. Okay. Any other no question? Fun. Bechavod, any other question? The, the one, what other one? Uh, the, yeah, sure. the taste of the man. That's why you gave the, in the past, then, uh, has given. In English, it has given the food. Now, I, I don't know, I've learned somewhere that the taste of man was actually what people wanted to think it was. Because they they wanted that taste, so the uh, so basically the first day are you saying was the original taste which uh, was mixed with their breads when they came out of Mitzrayim? Is that the taste you're referring to? And it's not because the others say that it, it tastes what you wanted it to taste like. So Akadosh Baruch Hu made the miracle that if people were thinking, let's say about spit a on steak. a bride, the <laughs> taste of a steak. Yeah. They would taste it in a bread. It all was that those people who make a miracle that they can taste it. They just have to think about it. That means that it was in the brain and they felt the taste. A Kadosh Bahu make miracle that that bread that they took out of Egypt, how long did it last? For how many days? 61 days, by the way from the day that they left Egypt until the manna came. How do we know that? Yeah. Days. Trail, when did they leave? They left? On the 15th. On the 15th. Uh, 15, 15, 15, you're yes. right. 15. Okay. So it's lost exactly. So it's come to tell you that during that time that they have enough bread that they took with them or the matzah, the unleavened bread, according to other people that call it ogiot, ogiot is cakes, mm -hmm. whatever, the lomishane, the taste, the special taste remained. They bread. But they didn't realize that that the taste of the manna. Mm -hmm. So they suddenly tasted in the, in the bread that they eat and the unleavened bread. That's according to the Gemara Masechet Kedushin Lamet Het Amud Alef. Lamet Het is 38 for your one. Beseder? Thank you. Thank you. Beseder. Any other question, Rabotai? Someone want to ask a question? Bechavod? No. Okay. Beseder Gamur? Okay, Rabotai. First of all, thank you very much for joining the show. That will, I hope that will give you a different way to look at Parshat HaShavua that we're going to read this Shabbos. And by Ezrat Hashem, that we'll have a peaceful week, a quiet week to us, to call Am Israel, Klal Am Israel, in the diaspora, in Eretz Israel, to the soldiers of Israel. And the same miracle that we're going to read in the Parsha, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu split the sea, brought a manna, the war with Amalek, that we defeat Amalek. Be'ezrat Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will show us all of those miracles speedily in our days, and will send us Mashiach Tzitkenu as soon as possible, that we can see Bet HaMikdash, and will, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will say enough to our children. Amen, Ken Yeratzon. Have Amen. a good night, everyone. Have a beautiful Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom to all of you. And please, God, will see miracle. Thank you for joining Amen. us. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. night. Shabbat Shalom.